I'd always thought that the vast majority of ancient history around Gala Shields, I'm talking 13th, 14th, 12th centuries, was gained from archaeology and English records. But there are two very, very famous Scottish documents or manuscripts. And both of these manuscripts mention Gala Shields. Now, one story has become a very popular traditional story which we celebrate every year in Gala Shields, but the other story has been largely or wholly forgotten. Now this is Englishman Syke in Gallish Hills, the spot where legend has it that in 1337 a group of Gallish Hills men murdered a gang of English raiders. A story which I've always thought was legend, folklore. But there's more to it than that. But the story of the sewer plumes and the English raiders being killed in Gallish Hills was real. And they did make a retreat back over the tweet. And it's chronicled in a book called Sacra Lonica. It was the only book of its time written by somebody who wasn't commissioned by the king. It was written by an Englishman who was imprisoned in the Edinburgh Castle at the time he wrote it. But it clearly defines Gala Shields as the place where these English raiders and Scotsmen met and the Englishman crossed the Tweed back in retreat. It's actually the first time that Gala Shields was ever mentioned in print. So, next time you're at the Gala Day and you're like me thinking that the whole Sewer Plumes thing was hearsay or folklore, it's not, it's real. But the second document that mentions Gala Shields is even more interesting and even more unknown. And to find out about it, I'm going to head up there. Gala Hill. Let's go. Now there seems to be a bit of a fervour just now in the Scottish borders for the life of William Wallace. Last week in Selkirk there were reenactments of Wallace being made the guardian of Scotland in the old Kirk at Selkirk. Now this all seems to have stemmed from the fact that two boffins from Norwich University or some other obscure English educational institution have discovered remains of an old church underneath the church in Selkirk, which allegedly was the site of Wallace being made the Guardian of Scotland. Which I think we all know is an arguable point. But I've been saying for years the Wallace connection in the borders is huge. And what I'm going to show you today is conclusive, written, black and white proof. William Wallace would be like an international superstar. He is still a, a historical international superstar, if you like. But what a lot of people don't realise is that the official records of Wallace or the written records of Wallace are extremely rare and few and far between. One source is the English army and the English king's official records of Wallace, i.e. major battles or the date and time of his capture and death. Records from the Scottish side are even fewer and far between and there's only really one record, one book, one manuscript 
that historians have delved into over the years to gain insight into the life of Wallace. So you're probably thinking, what is that book? What is that book about Wallace? Well, that book is known as Blind Harry's Wallace. Blind Harry was the author of a man who we don't really have very much information about. He was a priest or a minister of some, some description. He'd also been in the military, but we don't have very much information about him. Harry lived about 150 years after Wallace, so it wasn't like he knew Wallace personally. But what Harry did have was a manuscript or a document about Wallace written by one of Wallace's trusted right-hand men at the time of Wallace's life. Harry took that document and transformed it into his epic poem, Blind Harry's Wallace. And I'm here today at the foot of Gala Hill, in the Gala Shields, and not by accident. Find something find something find it insulting or not. It's wrong, but I, I just I can't see what I'm about William Wallace with this. I've been cutting clothes in Mel Gibson. Sorry, sorry. It was from Blind Harry's poem, if you want to call it that, on William Wallace, that we learned that Wallace was made the guardian of Scotland at the Forest Kirk. But there is one other mention of the Scottish borders in Blind Harry's novel, poem, manuscript, whatever you want to call it. And this one's a bit more specific and a bit less debatable. And it centres on where else? Gala Shields. But nobody seems to have picked up on this one. You know, our, our, news, our local newspapers are full of the Selkirk story. Not one person's mentioned the Gala story until now because I'm going to mention it. And Blind's Harry tells us that in 1296, the Earl of Cospatrick, one of the English lords or commanders had just suffered a defeat in Haddingtonshire at the hands of the Scottish army and they were retreating via Norham, Coldstream and then across towards the Ettrick Forest. But William Wallace and his band of men were tracking them. So Cospatrick at the opening to the Ettrick Forest took refuge and hiding on Gorgum. Now, Wallace followed Cuspatrick. He knew he was hiding here in Gala Hill, so Wallace was somewhere skirting the base of the hill looking for this guy. But Wallace was clever. He knew that his army was inferior in numbers to Cuspatrick, and he knew the impenetrable nature of this wood. The wood wouldn't have looked like this, this is, this is all forestry plantation stuff, but it was a thick woodland in the days with native, native species. But Wallace decided not to attack Cospatrick, and Cospatrick remained hidden in the forest of Gorgum or Gala Hill. What did Wallace do next? point at the summit of Gorgum or Gala Hill. So somewhere in this once dense native forest in 1296 was hidden a large army of English raiders. Oh, I wish I could go back in time. Back in time, back in 50 years. Yeah, man, I'm
shitting ourselves. Come on. Come on, we can do them. Come on. Oh, come on. Anyway, the last piece of 100% factual information for Blind Harry's manuscript that I'm going to give you is that Blind Harry says Wallace and his men passed Gorgum on the west and left Kirkpatrick alone. They passed on the west. Let's go and have a look what's on the west of Galil. Yeah, it's a little bit obscured by trees here, but to the west of Gala Hill, or Gorgum, lies Meagle Hill. And Meagle Hill, as you know from previous video, is the site of Wallace's putting stone. The myth becomes an even more believable reality. And there is the summit of Meagle Hill, directly to the west of Gorgum, the site of Wallace's putting stone. For me, this myth has grown from truth. Putting, perhaps, has derived from meeting. But Wallace was definitely there in 1296, scouting these English raiders that were hidden up here on Gorgum or Gala Hill. There you go. I know get a copy of Blinds Harry's Wallace yourself and have a read. So there you go. The tale of William Wallace and Gala Hill. Now if you want to know more about the story just have a look at a... Uh, uh, well nothing really because nobody's wrote anything about it since Robert Hall's History of Gala Shields, which was published in 1892, and since then, I've completely ignored it. You know, you may be thinking, so what? You know, what's, what's Wallace got to do with Gala Shields, you know, just because he was near here? But it's unthinkable that Wallace was fighting against these English oppressors in this area without enlistments and people, men from this area, joining them to ward off the invaders. So not only was it William Wallace, but it was William Wallace with a band of men from the borders in Gala Shields that were fighting the English in this area around Gala Shields. That's why it becomes significant. Or more significant. <laughs>